welcome back um drake with working dragon mystic and of course we got the lovely jade here with us Hello. Uh, this week we are going to be continuing the reading of the Havamal. so if you enjoy norse content um and hearing different people's perspectives or thoughts on a topic be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you're notified anytime we release a video like these little roundtable videos. Um, we are on stanza 104. We will be reading this. I've read the Havamal before quite a bit, actually. Jade, this is your first time through, correct? I am a noob. You're a noob. You have not read through <laughs> this. Um, she does not read ahead. Um mm -hmm. Halloween is not here tonight, so it's just going to be us to entertain the peoples, which hopefully we can keep it who read last um, track of who read last better with just two of us. We'll see. Who knows? We <laughs> no might promises. still jumble that up. <laughs> yeah, no promises on that. That is for sure. Um, so we will see what we're going to do. But it has placed you on the left-hand side of the screen, Jade, and we all know the tradition. Whoever's on that side is the one who starts the readings. So, Oh, fun. Yeah. So the recording program has decided you get to start us off tonight with stanza 104. Lovely. All right. Number 104. I visited an old giant and now I have returned. I didn't stay silent there. I spoke many words in support of my cause at the tongue call. So tongue sounds right. So tongue. Yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, it just sounds like he went to go visit, like what he said, an old giant, and let's see here, and spoke words of his cause. So he was maybe trying to speak of some type of a, like um. Like, I don't know if like the right word would be like a campaign in a sense or like some type of a, a thing he's trying to propose to the old giant to get support from him. Um, Could be. Um, For me, this one was tricky, but I, what I've settled on after meditating on it is because what is a cause? A cause could be anything. Uh, essentially, your cause is why did you go here? Mm-hmm. So to me, it sounds like he went there, he stayed on topic, he took care of what needed to be taken care of and came home. Mm -hmm. He didn't linger. He, he didn't linger. He didn't get um, waste time with other things. He took care of why he was there and mm -hmm. came on home. That's what okay. I get from it. Getting right. down to business. Mm -hmm. Okay, 105. Oh, great. They gave me the harder one. Um, Gunloth, his daughter, gave me a drink of his precious mead while I sat on a golden chair. I would later give her a bad repayment for her trusting mind, for her troubled mind. This is definitely one of those, to me, that feels like Odin's telling on himself again. I mean, because the daughter is, you know, being a good hostess in a sense by bringing him a drink, sitting him down, and I guess bad repayment. Maybe he didn't thank her. Could be, could be. And maybe um, not listening to her because not trusting her, her mind and her troubled mind. So maybe there was something that she needed to talk about, and he didn't listen. It's possible. He could have been a bad guest. Mm -hmm. It could have been. The next stanza might wrap back into this and give us a bit more insight. But yeah, right now this is sounding like he was not a good guest. She, yeah. you know, shared her mead, put him in a great seat within the home mm -hmm. and he didn't pay her back well. Bad yeah. or naughty. All right. 106. Mm-hmm. Giants' dwellings were over and under me. I used Rati's tusk to burrow out and gnaw away the rock. In this way, I got out with my head. 
So did he upset the daughter because he didn't, he did a bad repayment. And so they're trying to take his head. Sounds like he, 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 yeah. It sounds like he, he got he in trouble. To, yeah. He got in trouble and had to run. Okay. That that's honestly that's what I'm good. hearing there. Yeah, it sounds like he had to bugger off. He done upset somebody. Mm-hmm. That could be well, if he done, you know, bad payment and all, he might have earned that one. Yep. So yeah, be careful, people. Treat people with respect. Be kind about it. Keep yourself out of trouble. Um, yeah. So 107, I made good use of the disguise I used. Few things are too difficult for the wise. Now, Othran, Othrear, whoa, is rescued from the clutches of the giants. So is Othrear his alias disguise name um you know that's actually a good question uh google that and see what it says on that let's go ahead and have a little fun with this because author and rear it's it sounds familiar but i'm not placing it and i since i can't place it i don't want to comment and mislead the audience Norse. First, either so Othorir is one of three vessels that contain the mead of, of poetry or the mead itself. Okay, so this is actually talking about where Odin stole the mead of poetry. <laughs> okay, um, Othorir, that is the vessel, that is correct. There's a lot of people who put this on their drinking horns in Norse practice. Okay, that's okay. why I recognize it. So, yes, we are essentially seeing here where he has essentially tricked the daughter into sharing the mead. And he absconded with it. He took off. Ooh. Odin is well known to do anything for knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. When it comes to most of his deceitful acts, it usually has to do with learning something. Mm -hmm. so um it makes it sound like he was rescuing someone <laughs> yeah that's um, why because he said he had to make a disguise and he said now author rear is rescued i was like so did he rescue himself by using an alternate name mm -hmm. or we, we know old odin old one of them, that boy got a list of names longer than anyone i think mm -hmm. so, so that was a good, you know, good thought this is why we look up words Mm -hmm. I want to make that clear. If you don't recognize the word, if you don't know its meaning or how it's being used, look it up because we could have completely misread this. Because mm -hmm. the way we read it gave us one view. And I'm sure Odin would say that's not a wrong view. Perhaps it's telling you something. You know, mm -hmm. when some when you need to free something or whatnot, all tactics to do what is right is uh correct if you want to look at the philo philosophical text is speaking to you concept mm -hmm. but when we look the word up that one word changing that one word flips the script entirely now yeah. we see a different story absolutely so when we're reading something and we're trying to read for understanding don't be shy about looking things up Okay, I stumbled and fumbled over that name. Yeah. Which means oh, it is now I, your turn. Yeah. Oh my gosh, these stanzas are having some words that I ugh, I am not the best Gunlaw. at pronunciations. So Jotunheim and Gunlaw. Okay. I doubt I could have escaped Jotunheim if I hadn't used Gunlaw. The good woman who rested in my arms. So, 
So okay. Yeah, so he he's talking about tricking Gunloth. Okay. Without her, without whatever manipulation was there, he does not think he could have mm -hmm. escaped Jotunheim. Yeah. So this is some Cold War James Bond super spy espionage stuff happening here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So, you know, he got in good with somebody to get him close, get him what he ne needed, and get him the time to get out of Dodge. Bad Odin. <laughs> so, stanza 109. The next day, the Frost Giants came to ask news about Odin in Odin's Hall. They inquired about the evildoer, whether he was among the gods, or whether Satung had killed him. So, sounds like the the giants are out to get Odin, but do they not know that Odin was the one who was there? Because they're asking about the evildoer. I so, think they suspect it's Odin. But they don't know 100% for sure. Right, because they're asking of him. He clearly ain't there. Mm -hmm. um, Lord only knows where he's at. He might be out in the yeah. woods camping. Um, but yeah, they they went to speak to him. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't specifically say they suspect him, but I mean, from reading this, I'm getting the feeling, you know, they're like, they think old one I might have done it. I mean, considering that he literally just stole something, um, pulled a fast one on one of the giant's daughters and got out of Dodge. And literally right after that happens, these giants are coming after him, going to his hall. They're like, yo, where's this Odin dude? And yeah. I mean, this feels, so. I mean, we're borderline shotgun wedding scenario here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, it feels like they're, they're suspicious at the very least if they are not certain they just they might not have the proof they need but mm -hmm. yeah I, I i think they're convinced he did it they just can't prove it yet yeah well let's see if we find out yeah. more number 110 i believe that odin swore an oath to them but who can trust odin he left the tongue deceived in his own home and he left Gunloth weeping. So, <laughs> so he swore an oath to them. So he was probably like, I, I come in peace. I come with no harm kind of deal when he showed up in a sense. Well, I can see that. And I, I, the way I'm reading it personally is that he tricked Satung first. Then mm -hmm. he tricked his daughter. Mm -hmm. Essentially screwed them both over. Mm -hmm. We don't know what promises he made to either one of them. I'm pretty sure there was relationship promises made in there. Yeah. So all that like very well could have been, especially since he left Gunloth weeping. So she obviously yep. had so some emotional attachment there. And the first part is actually what took place after that, where he basically cut a deal to get himself out of trouble mm. for those events. That that's kind of the way I'm reading it here. Because he says he swore an oath to them, but who can trust Odin? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't like to admit it, but one of Odin's names is Oathbreaker. Mm -hmm. The Norse are so known for honor and word, keeping their words and stuff, that a lot of people have a real hard time wrapping their head around the fact that Odin will use any tactic to better himself and his people. Mm -hmm. They really do. And it, it is a tricky one. And I've actually heard some people raise the question, who's the larger villain in Norse mythology? 
if there's a villain, would it be Loki or Odin? Now, I'd argue neither are the villain, and that's an entire mm -hmm. different roundtable discussion. But if you look at the deeds of the two recorded mm -hmm. through myth, Odin gets up to a lot worse shenanigans. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. And for those who's like, well, Loki's the shadow of Odin. I, if, if you want to look at it from that philosophical perspective, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that isn't it's see people, everybody got upset because it's like, how dare they say that about women? Look what Odin's saying about himself. Mm -hmm. He's like, I ain't that good of a guy either. Look, I got my problems. But I will say this, and this is something this is a context to what we're reading that I think we should remember. These are the writings and the words of Odin. In this story, he's speaking of his past. I don't know one person on this earth who hasn't done something in some way they regret. Now, I, I myself have plenty of them. The irony is I wouldn't change them. I own up to them. Mm -hmm. When I screw up, when I, if I've done something like this, I would tell you because I learned from it. I grew from it. It shaped me because I was willing to learn from it. And it's a mistake I wouldn't repeat again. Absolutely. Does that make sense? So we have to yep. keep in context. He's looking back. I think is important. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. I could be an idiot, but I think that's important. <laughs> and ah, oh, crap! It's my turn, ain't it? Yep. Yep, and I. Oh. Okay, this is a long one. Okay, I got this. I can do this. <clears throat> it is time to speak on the wise man's chair at Earth's well. I saw and was silent. I saw and I thought. I listened to men's speech. I heard about runes. They were not silent with counsel at Odin's Hall, in Odin's Hall. I heard them say so. We're getting ready to open up into one of the funner parts of this. So, okay. This is a tricky one. You can tap out. No disrespect needed. What do you think? I will. The hint I'll give is we're opening into the next section. So it's not linked like a story, like some of the last ones we read. Those are very almost, mm -hmm. we should have probably read some of those together, but. I'm I'm lost. I'm I'm tapping out. Okay, all right. <laughs> we are talking about the sharing of knowledge and wisdom, the communication of advice. You know. Okay. Think about when friends counsel one another. Mm -hmm. Um, they weren't silent. They spoke up. Like, if I have a friend that's about to do something stupid, can I stop them? In truth. Well, depending on the friend, I might be able to put them in a figure four. But eventually, I have to fall asleep at some time. If they're determined, truth be told, unless I lock them up in jail, they're going to do what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So the truth is the best I can really do is to counsel them, advise them of what I see in their path. But they still must make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. And... I think most of us have that kind of friendship where we have someone either who will give us advice or we'll give it. And sometimes it's reciprocal. Sometimes, you know, we just got that idiot who we try to steer right and they just never listen. Nitro. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of what that's talking about. And that opens up into the next section because the next section is this kind of a conversation. Got it. Okay. Well, let's get into it. You're Number up. 112, I counsel you, Lord Fafnir, if, if you'll take my advice, you will profit, you'll profit if you learn it, and bleh. 
it'll do you good if you remember it. Do not rise at night unless you're spying on your enemies or seeking a place to relieve yourself. What advice is Odin giving? Basically telling him that unless he has business to do at night, like what he was saying, like spying on enemies or having to go use the loo, um, he should sleep. He should get rest. That's exactly it. When it's time to rest, rest. Unless mm -hmm. you have a genuine need to be out and about at night, mm -hmm. rest, stay home, sleep. Mm -hmm. So clearly Odin wasn't a clubbing kind of guy. Yeah. But I love it. It's like, get out there. You're only out there if you're working, spying on somebody, doing something that requires the cover of night, or you're taking a tinkle. Mm -hmm. Nature calls. So that is good. All right. 113. I counsel you, Lotfanir. If you will take my advice, you'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good if you remember it. Do not sleep in the arms of a sorceress, or else she will lock your limbs. This one's a little tricky, I'll admit. But then there's some people who put a philosophical spin on it, and I get that. I mean, is he referring to a sorceress as also being just a woman in general? Because if he sleeps in the arms of a woman, he will be then become more tied to that woman in a sense well it is in my opinion this one was hard but it, in my opinion when i came to it, it's a bit of a double meaning because again remember these are written poetically mm -hmm. um i honestly think when we use sorceress we are talking about a woman who could put us under a love spell or inspel us with her love or her mm -hmm. beauty or any of these things so this could be a literal sorceress who does some um, uh, works her mojo and puts a whammy on you. And regardless of whether you want to be in that relationship or not, you're stuck mm -hmm. and you can't leave. Okay. Your limbs are locked. You can't walk away. Or it could be as Odin has advised us many times, love sickness can strike anyone. Mm -hmm. and that we should be mindful of who <laughs> we open ourselves up to because there is i know people don't want to admit it in today's age but when you lower your guard when you're comfortable enough to lay and sleep with someone literally sleep you're at your most vulnerable point right there mm -hmm. that creates a bond of trust between you and them that Walking away hurts that much more. Mm -hmm. So I think it does deal with the magical viewpoint as well as the be mindful of who you choose to share a bed with. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. That's that's what I've gotten out of that in the past. Okay. Um, for the audience, if you have an interesting take on that or you've heard an interesting take on it, I'd be interested to hear it. All right. All right. Uh, Number 114. Yes. She will enchant you so that you won't care for advice nor a powerful man's words. You will want neither food nor the pleasure of the friend's a friend's company and you will sleep full of sorrow. Okay. Now this part, this one I think is important because it does modify that one a little bit. Mhm. Mm have you heard of things like this? 
Have you seen I, it? I have seen it personally. Friends who have gotten so wrapped up in their relationships, they cut off all communication with their, the friends that they so dearly cared about. Like everything revolved around that person that they were in a relationship with and nothing else existed at that point. Right. This right here, people, is big. I don't care who you are. Listen to Odin here. If a relationship is authentic, you will not have to give up your friends, your life, your activities, the things you enjoy. If it's a real relationship, if you're in a relationship with a guy, a gal, um, a pumpkin, and they tell you, you have to cut out all your friends or you can't be with me. You know what? Cut out the relationship. You just got the answer you need. Mm -hmm. Because that only leads to sorrow. Yep. You will regret everything you lost because that person will not care enough to actually attempt to fulfill those places. Okay, listen, mm -hmm. that's an important one. All right, my turn. Uh, 115. I counsel you, Lot Veneer. If you'll take my advice, you'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good if you remember it. Never seduce another man's woman with whispers in her ear. This should be a duh. <laughs> yeah, don't be a homewrecker. I mean, this is okay. This okay. I got a lot to say on this one. Mm -hmm. Um, because this kind of stuff has never made sense to me, even when I was young. Okay. And guys, this goes for you. Ladies, this goes for you. I don't care. It works in all directions. If there is a couple, they're a happy couple, and you can whisper and woo and pull them away, or they're willing to cheat with you, they're willing to cheat on you. A cheater is a cheater, will always be a cheater. Mm -hmm. Okay? Don't waste your time. Don't woo that person. Because they could easily be wooed away from you. Exactly. There's nothing real there. Number two, there's a really high chance that whoever you wooed them away is going to be a little upset and might take it out on you. Mm -hmm. Number three, and this is the one that really fries people's brains when it comes to me. If you think you could woo my wife away from me and she actually chooses you over me, okay. I'm not going to lower myself to fighting for someone who threw away everything that we had together. Mm -hmm. Because if my relationship is real, guess who I don't have to worry about? Everyone else. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Jealousy is the dumbest emotion on the planet in my mind. That's all I got to say about that. You want to add anything to it? No. Not at all. That uh, what you said was on on point. Yeah. To the I team. realized I said I had two points, but I ended up with three. So you know, I, it's I all cool. Count. I learned to count in Kentucky. Sorry. <laughs> 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 all right, you're up. <laughs> uh, I will uh, number one sixteen. I will counsel you, Lord Fafnir. If you choose to, uh, if you'll take my advice, you'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good to, if you remember it. If you spend time wandering by land or by sea, bring plentiful provisions. I mean, that's just common sense. You, I'll be you honest, common sure... sense this day and age feels like a superpower. It really does. Yeah. I mean, even if you're like, I mean, I never leave the house without some type of substance in my purse because you never know if you're going to be broken down on the side of the road like even if i'm driving down you know 10 minutes down the road you never know what's going to happen i always have like at least a granola bar a bottle of water something and yep. see we 
we just got back from a road trip. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun, beautiful traveling through the mountains. Um, go watch um, the most recent uh, Magical Coffee Hour. I talked about it there. I won't bore y'all with it. Um, in my car, mm -hmm. I had a five-gallon military water can. And we had food in the car. Um, I think I always have like a a bug out bag, a survival kit or something anytime I take mm -hmm. a long trip. So in there, I know for certain my bag alone had actually their Coast Guard sea rations for three days three days worth of food and mm -hmm. like one of those packages of rations. Um, and I pretty sure my wife had one too. Mm -hmm. And then there, we usually keep one tucked in the glove compartment because you just never know. So we mm -hmm. had sustenance and we had water. So no matter where we broke down, we're okay. Yep. Um, and you can bet that or better will be done when we do the much, much longer trip coming up next year. Mm -hmm. Think about your provisions. Think about what you need. And when you do this, also think about your knowledge base and your skill set. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you got those guys, oh, as long as I got me a knife, I can survive. Great. So as long as you have a fixed blade knife, you can go into woods, you can fashion rope and a shelter, you can catch you some squirrels and possums and you can eat well and you can survive great if you don't have that knowledge set get your space blanket get you some granola bars get you some jerky hey yeah. stop at mcdonald's and get you a bag of 10 or 12 double cheeseburgers for the trip mm -hmm. <laughs> don't don't just kill the bag you know eat rational amount yeah i mean you imagine your, you know you can do your rations in modern times. <laughs> Imagine, you know, somebody like me, like when I leave the house, because I have kids with me. So oh, not yeah. only do I always have to make sure I have food for myself, but I always have to make sure I have at least, you know, a good amount of food for my kids too, and diapers, because I have a toddler. So I got to make sure I have so many things in case if, you know, stuff hits the fan. Yeah, I see I, moms these days leaving the house with, more than I take camping. I mean, they got strollers <laughs> and diaper bags. And the thing is, I've actually, I actually have done this three times because I don't keep circle of friends a lot with kids. So I don't have as many opportunities, but three times I've known mothers where I was eight, comfortable to ask this question. And it's, do you actually need what you are got there? All three of them went through there, and I'd say 98% of what they packed down the house was needed. They had a legitimate reason for every item. Mm -hmm. Kids take a lot of provisions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if it's just M&Ms to throw at them so they shut up. <laughs> oh, goldfish crackers actually do really good at that, too. <laughs> actually, yeah, I think that is the go-to. Like, I... It's kind of weird because until I like babysitted uh, my neighbor's kid, which my neighbor was actually our principal at the time when I was younger, um, which you have any idea how bad that sucks living next to your principal and knowing your mom is friends with the principal. You can't get away with squat. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, that's when I actually learned to like goldfish crackers because that's about all the kid would eat. So, yeah. Anywho. <laughs> yep. Total went on, on a, Think uh, ahead. a tangent there. Yeah. Think ahead <laughs> about your provisions and what you need. Absolutely. And day-to-day -day life, this could actually be your grocery list, people. What do you need for the week? Okay. There's a lot of people who shop day-to-day. -day. If anything, I'm not going to go into details, but 2020 may have taught us a thing that forward thinking is a good thing. Day-to-day -day might get a little hinky occasionally. That's all we'll say about that. Otherwise, we'll get flagged. All right, moving on. Yep. Number 117, that's you, Drake. All right, that's me. Cool, I can do this. I counsel you, Lot Fafner, if you, you'll you take my advice. You'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good if you remember it. Never let a bad man know of your misfortune, for you will never profit at all for telling him about it. 
I love this one. I mean, because if you tell a bad man of your misfortune, he could flip that and use it to his benefit. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say if you're short on cash and you tell a bad man about it, he's like, oh, you need cash? I can get you cash, but you're probably going to be signing a really ready deal getting that cash. And he's going to end up profiting massively in the end. Exactly. This goes into be careful who you trust with what's going on in your life. People can use your misfortunes against you to leverage it, and that's not a good thing. Be careful. Yeah. I mean, it it could even go as far as like blackmail. Like if you know, like if a, a bad person knows of a uh, trouble that you're going through, they'll they'll remember it. And then yeah. when it comes to a time where they are wanting something from you, they'll be like, "Well, you remember that time where you told me this? How that would suck if somebody else found out about that." Exactly exactly be mindful who you mm -hmm. trust with your information people um but actually i know a perfect like three years ago i know somebody whose security system was faulty and was having problems and they were complaining about it at their local watering hole three days later their house got broke into there was no alarm conveniently be careful what you say and where you say it. Oh my gosh. 118, Jade, that's you. <laughs> I saw a bad woman's words bite a man in the neck. A lying tongue was his death and not even with good cause. We see a lot of this in modern day still. I'm trying to pick my words so I I I Yeah, this is this I'm not gonna lie, this is gonna be a hard one for us to and I think the fairest way to do this, and I truly, truly believe this. I'm not just picking my words here when I say this is the fairest way, because this is we're we're using gender, and like I said, it's poetic, so it goes back and forth. It doesn't necessarily lock that gender in. But the simple fact is men and women alike, period. There are people out there who will lie to get you in trouble, to ruin your life, to cause you harm, or even get you convicted of something they did. Mm -hmm. Because it serves their purpose, or in probably more cases, because you did something to upset them. Mm -hmm. it's sad that people are so petty or yeah. so evil mm -hmm. but you really have to be careful because people can be that vindictive and manipulative and yeah. it sucks because it's like you know or it's almost like Odin's telling you be paranoid of everybody <laughs> mm -hmm. But to some extent, you kind of have to. And I don't know personally what it was like in his day and age, but studying history, if the right person made the right accusation, there could be a guillotine in your future. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to say the modern world's any better right now. So... People, be careful. And I hope everyone hearing this is on the side of those honorable who wouldn't make a false thing. Mm -hmm. But be careful. That's about the most, the best way we could describe this one. Yeah. Because you're right. This, ooh, ooh. this one could get us in trouble. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was I was really like jogging my yeah, mind Jay's to like, see how I could say it. All right, let's so, let's try to end on a good one. Let's try to end on a good one. Uh, yep. Not that one. I want to end on that one. <laughs> no, <laughs> moving on. So I'm up, right? Yep. Okay, one nineteen. I counsel you, Lot Fafnir, if you'll take my advice, you'll profit if you learn it. It'll do you good if you remember it. If you have a friend and you trust him, go and visit him often. 
Weeds and high grass will grow on a path nobody travels. Ooh, that's what we needed. I love this one. Mm -hmm. It makes my heart go pitter patter. Spread the love, people. But you want to be around good company. So when you have those good friends, go spend time with them, be with them, enjoy their company. Nurture that friendship. Mm -hmm. Just because they're a good friend doesn't mean you should just ignore them. There's so mm -hmm. many people this day and age that have this concept that a true friend is always a friend no matter what when you need them. But if that friendship's not nurtured, if it's not kept up, um, I love the way they talk about the grass on the path here, actually, mm -hmm. because it's like tending to a garden. You're keeping it weeded and well maintained. Mm -hmm. um, friendship is that real friendship. Mm -hmm. You're not going to need an excuse to go see somebody. You're not going to, you're not going to see them is not a chore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm going to out both me and Jade here just a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I am. I am. I want to out us out here, Jay. I want to out us. Okay. So I honestly do consider Jade here one of my dear friends. Um, Likewise. To the point where I will be working, I'll be doing something, um, or it'll be one of those days where I'm groggy, I'm seeing triple, I'm trying to get enough coffee in me to even jumpstart my brain. Mm -hmm. And she's on her way to work. She'll drop a Zoom link into the gilded admin area and be like, hey, if anybody's free, you want to chat? I will stop what I'm doing. Oh, I'll take the coffee pot with me. Let's not get silly. Um, <laughs> and I will go chat with Jade while she's driving mm -hmm. to work. Just why? Because. And we've had some really great conversations deep meaningful ones and we've had some really just weird goofy uh how we were not on drugs i don't know <laughs> <laughs> because if we recorded it and played it back the only excuse most people would give is they're high we were not i don't do drugs of any kind so i, I won't speak for you jay but we were not <laughs> so that's what we mean. Tend that friendship. You don't necessarily have to go to their house, luckily, because Jade, that's a long drive for me. But um, tend that friendship. We do it naturally, organically. Um, sure, there's weeks you get busy or I get busy, and you know we're checking each other. It's like, are you still alive on Sunday? Um, but tend those relationships. And the beauty of that, this day and age that we're in right now is that distance doesn't, is not a factor anymore. You can use technology to nurture those friendships. Yes. Now, you can shoot a text, say, hi, how you doing? How's the family? Mm -hmm. But I'm um, personally speaking, don't rely solely on text. Pick up the phone, people. I don't know if people realize it, but these do still have a voice option mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean and it doesn't even have to be a long conversation like even just like 10 minutes just to check in mm -hmm. with each other and say how's the day going how's the family and whatnot yeah. i mean drake checks in with me every once in a while and asks how my kids are doing yeah gotta check on the little ones occasionally you know so tend to that path tend to those friendships they are worth it if they're deserving of the title of friend they're worth it mm -hmm. okay absolutely don't, don't use this modern day excuse to ignore people all right that was a good one. what is the next one do we want to end there i'm going to cheat and look ahead <laughs> Okay, we're going to end there because we're going to start a section on the runes next. So that's actually a great spot to end. Perfect. So Let me highlight this be... so I know we finished here. 119 is where we left off today. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Well, I hope you all Bye. enjoyed hearing us get all goofy and everything and reading these stanzas mm -hmm. this was an interesting one this was this was a fun one 
And that was that's a good one to end on. I love those when Absolutely. talks about friendship. And I know there's plenty of people when Odin's like telling how much of a jerk he is, or well, basically accusing other people of being deceitful. <laughs> It's like, that's not nice. We never said it was. <laughs> but it is wise to be mindful of potential treacherous shenanigans. Absolutely. So, Jay, this was a lot of fun. Ugh, ugh, can't talk. This was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining me. Um, hopefully we will be back for another one of these in two weeks. I think yep. next week is a non Havama one, which mm -hmm. we are talking about doing um, occult parenting or yep. another cryptid video. We're not sure which we're going to do yet, people, but we're, we'll figure it out. All right. Everyone, thank you. If you've enjoyed this, do please hit subscribe. And turn on the bell notification so you're notified anytime we release a new video or go live. We do live streams on uh, Sundays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I drew a blank for half a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, anything you want to share? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I mean, if you guys join the Gilded community, you'll get to see all of us in there um, having great metaphysical conversations and just building a, a really great community of people who truly care about their practice indeed indeed and you can find that link in the about section of the channel mm -hmm. um so yeah all right and with that we will see you all next week take care and bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.